For a long while now, I've talked about the virtues of having refined and simple radio systems. We've talked about the 17 foot vertical whip, which is resonant on 20 meters when you fully extend it, which is a little bit of physical adjustment. The problem, it's not really a problem, it's just more the reality of it, is that's just a whip, right? It has threads on the bottom of it and you have to interface it into whatever you're doing. So that usually meant some kind of a tripod with a coax connection or a clamp that had a coax connection. I'm thinking of the CB vice grip like we've talked about in the past. Well, Chameleon just came out with a new device. This is the Chaw blank and yeah, it has an SO2 port on the bottom. This is threaded at the base, which means you can adapt this to tripods, their spike, basically whatever you want so long as the thread pitch matches and you can put the whip on top and you can have your shielded coax connection at the bottom. And then because it's threaded, you can have your radials, ground system, whatever you want to do on the base. I came out to the park here to set this up as kind of a demonstration to show what you can do, but I'm also going to do a bit of a comparison of the 17 foot whip when using both the adjustable vertical antenna from Chameleon and just the blank. As far as mounting options go, I've got my Chameleon bag here with the adjustable vertical as well as some mounting options that I've used in the field that I like. Uh, there's two in particular that you'll be probably most familiar with, which is the spike, which we're going to test, and this small tripod. There are various types of tripods that exist on the market that you can get. Obviously, these are both threaded, so I'm gonna have to show you how to figure that out. But both of these are really nice options that you can carry with you. The tripod is probably the most travel friendly. Uh, the spike is not so travel friendly, so keep that in mind. To adapt this, you'd use a collar. So this collar is threaded on both ends and the tripod will accept the threaded base and you can put the blank on the top like that. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, how do you put your radial wires on that, right? You could use round terminal connectors and wire, or, because I've got one extra, the radial donut that Chameleon makes. It has little holes about the diameter of a banana plug. So you take out your blank again, and the blank is dished, so it goes right into the bottom. So you can see perfectly gapped and then you can go right in to the blank. Now you could just leave this on and you could put this onto the spike for another option if you just wanted to go with the spike instead. The spike's often good because it'll handle a lot of that lateral sway that you might get from wind so that might be an option. How I deal with it though is I just take this tripod and I pull the legs all the way out so it's almost completely flat on the ground and then extend the legs and once you add your radials it's usually okay in most, wind, most windy situations. For today's example though I'm going to use a good old-fashioned spike. Okay so mount it right in the base locked in. If you weren't so inclined as well, you could add radials under the threaded knob here and that would work fine too, but if you got this little donut solution, that works really well. So I'm going to grab my coax. I've got pre-cut radials, they're about 12 feet each four bundles. I'm going to start out with two and we may either go up or down from there. Now something that can happen when you're using an antenna like this is it could be a little short. Now why would it be a little short? Well, we've got different, well it's also not extended, but uh, we have different ground compositions here versus at a beach or uh, in more dry climates. It can vary. Now, yeah, length shouldn't be that different, but I've used 17 foot whips where uh, it's properly resonant or at least giving you a good SWR on whichever band, say 20, which is gonna be the longest frequency set you would work with. So if that's the case, there's a couple of things you can do. If you're only bringing the 17 foot whip, you can get a little alligator clip with nine to seven in 17 inches of wire as kind of a, a little stinger, if you will, that you can add to it. The problem with that is it's gonna be hanging loose. Chameleon does have an option uh, that is a part of their adjustable vertical kit, which are these rods that you can add, and this will add a bit of length to it. Let's add two of them and see uh, what we can get on the antenna. Now sure enough, we made it too long, so let's take out one of those links and check it again.
All right, so one of these on top of the whip is now still a little too long. So we're gonna physically lower some of the elements until we're right where we want it to be, which I'm in for whisper. We're gonna do another whisper test to see how this antenna performs. Well, I just eyeballed it, but I got right where I wanted it to be. That was about six inches off the top. All right, well, let's see how we did. Let's get it hooked up to my 705. Let's see what we can hear. Maybe there'll be some potas we can work. By the way, if you have this backpack and you want some strain relief, if it's like hanging off, like you've done the mod like I've done, adding an automobile kind of mobile antenna connector on the side, come through the top of this and come right there. Easy. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Kilo India 6, N-A-Z. N-A-Z, it sounds familiar. Is this Josh? Oh yeah, that's me. How you doing, bud? <laughs> hey man, the man himself. The, the YouTuber, K-I-6-N-E-Z. How's things down in L.A., man? Uh, pretty good, pretty good. I'm actually just testing an antenna out here in the park coming at you. Five watts on a 17-foot vertical whip. You're absolutely nailing it up here. I'm up here in, uh, near Sacramento, cool California. So yeah, clear 5.9. What, what am I down there? Oh yeah, it's a 5.9 both ways easy. You got a great signal, very clear. Love your YouTube channel, by the way. I just love it. I'm a YouTuber as well. Um, and in fact, I work with Steve uh, temporarily offline now and then, and uh, Bob K6 UDA. He was in the, the club here before he moved. So, yeah, really love your content. Hey, I appreciate that. Yeah, Steve's a great guy. So's uh, so's Bob. Bob's all right. We'll take him. Uh, <laughs> a little bummed. Well, no, I, I'm I'm glad he's up in Idaho. I know he loves it up there. But yeah, man. Uh, so, what are you doing? Are you just uh, working queues? Or are you at a park? I'm just sitting around at home doing as little as possible. I just hooked up uh, some batteries to some solar panels here. So I was just looking at the voltage drop, which is serious. So I got 20 feet of 12 gauge wire and the voltage is just sagging big time. But uh, sounds like I'm making it to Los Angeles. Are, are, are you doing a video or anything? Are you testing something out? Go ahead. Uh, yeah, actually I am. I'm, I'm testing out here at the park. It's not a parks on the air or anything, but I've got a 17 foot, you know, one of those uh, adjustable vertical whips with what's called a blank. So it, it basically allows you to have a connection to coax to the shield on the low side, but then it isolates the vertical part of the whip so you can have a full antenna. Interesting. So is it just for uh, 20 meters? Is it a low Q, wide band kind of thing? That was always been my problem with the ham sticks. You know, you got to tune them constantly. Go ahead. Yeah, so this, this whip is 17 feet long. So it's just the standard cheap 17 foot whip. Uh, and that means you could reduce the size to get from 20 meters is probably the lowest you can go and you can go all the way down to 10. Uh, but yeah, you, you adjust it physically for resonance. Yeah, well, it's certainly working and you don't need an antenna, a tuner or anything there? No, in fact, you shouldn't use an antenna tuner. You should physically adjust it for the, the length of most resonance, if you will. Uh, and that lets you get all the signal out like I'm doing right now. Yeah, that's terrific. You know, at low voltages, you know, every fuse and every relay introduces loss, right? And uh, yeah, that makes sense. That that's a big, big deal. Yeah, I try not to use an antenna tuner. I just got a fan dipole in the backyard, kind of tangled up in the oak tree, but it resonates. So, so do you get the whole band? I mean, can you get all of 20 with that without a tuner? Oh yeah, yeah, affirmative, affirmative. Yeah, if you if you add loading like coils and whatnot, you you progressively add more Q, and that's what's going to narrow your your kind of band, your usable spot, right? So by using just a a big long vertical or a big long wire, you know you're going to get the most bandwidth you can. Yeah, it sure sounds good. I'll look forward to the video if you're making it. And uh, yeah, I usually use a linked dipole when I'm in the field, but you know, it's kind of a hassle doing the links. So I'm, you know, I'm always looking for something for the lazy ham. You know what I mean? Our community is lazy and cheap. <laughs> Well, I think the 17 foot whip covers you on the cheap side. They're, they're like 40 bucks, but um, yeah, you, you do have to go out and physically manhandle the thing when you want to go to like a lower frequency. And, and obviously being that the limit is 17 feet, you have to add a coil or something to it if you want to get all the way down to like 40 meters, but there's options for that as well. But yeah, no, I hear you. You know, there's, there's nothing wrong with the link dipole. I still use those a lot too. And in fact, I, um, I, I like uh, a link dipole for summits on the air if I can get enough space to put it up in. Well, I'll let you get 
to it, Josh. Um, I'll see you on YouTube. Let me know if you want to do a YouTube collaboration. I do the uh, that Digipi project, digipi.org, which is that amateur radio data transceiver. So yeah, let me know if you want a copy of that. Um, I'm on the Z, so um, I'll get you a Digipi if you want. If you're into those digital modes, go ahead. Oh yeah, copy that. Yeah, good luck uh, to you. Keep keep making the Q cells out there, and I'm going to dial around a little bit. Going to do a little bit of whisper testing on this antenna system. All in all, pretty respectable performance. Got about 126 pickups on my signal, with the furthest being out some 5,000 miles. You can see them there at the top of the list. EA8 BFK is Peter in the Canary Islands. He picks up a lot of folks. Then we got ON5KQ, that's Uli in Belgium. And then DJ2DS is Dirk in Germany. So not bad. Now note that negative 16 is about the best signal. You couldn't do a single sideband on that, but if we cut this data a little bit differently, here's a look at the strongest signals that picked me up or how I was heard on the other end. Note those 20s, uh, 400 something miles away. Seems like we got a little hop there. KA3 LNA, 2300 miles at a 15. Now, anything pretty much above a zero is going to be possible to do single sideband with. And you can see we're getting a thousand miles out in most cases here. Some 400, that's where you saw a lot larger signals. But hey, that works. <laughs> that's pretty good stuff, all in all. Now, as always, we are in the height of the sun cycle right now so a lot of propagation is is really hopping 20 meters is a nice middle band for a lot of these kind of tests though and 20 meters is often very popular so that's why i was getting picked up you can look forward to another video i'm going to do comparing the difference between tuning an antenna for reactants versus swr you often hear from some people you know tuning for swr is not what you want and i'm going to show you why that is using this vertical antenna and this blank system because it actually makes it really, really easy to demonstrate it. So look forward to that video coming soon. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. I heard a Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. QSL? Uh, copy, copy. Yeah, you got me down here in Cerritos, California. You are a 5.9. Copy the 5.9. You're a 5.1 here. How many watts are you using? Uh, five of them, five watts. Okay, that would explain it. You're clear. You're just, uh, yeah, you're making it in great. Not moving the needle. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I'm using 100 watts. I feel guilty now. Uh, no, you use all you can when you're out doing parks on the air. Uh, have a good activation out there. 7-3. 7-3, and thanks for hunting. Uh, QRZ, KM6, HGH, doing parks on the air. Eagle, I'm Eagle, 78, Japan Eagle. Eagle, I'm Eagle, 78, Japan Eagle. Thank you very much. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Uh, uh, the number 6 station, please stand by. There is a Kilo India station again. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. QSL. Uh, Delta Bravo, uh, please stand by. Uh, the Kilo India 6, November Alpha question mark again. This is Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Roger, thank you so much. I got it now. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. I have you 5555 in southern Utah. The park is US 6081. QSL? Uh, copy, copy. You're a 5757 into Cerritos, California. Gotcha. Thank you so much for the 57 in Cerritos. Thank you so much for Southern Cal, my friend. 73. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Uh, that's a Roger Roger. You're 5959 into Cerritos, California. Wow, you're 59 into northern Nevada here, too. I'm pulling the string pipe. Yeah, I'm using all of 5 watts to talk to you right now, too. Wow. Well, I got 100 watts here sitting in my pickup truck at 5 watts from, from southern California. You're doing a great job, sir. That's not bad. Not bad at all. Yeah, uh, good luck out there with the parks on the air activation. 7 3. Roger, thank you very much. 73 to you, too.
back to that, Kenny. Well, you're definitely in there, and good luck uh, with your first activation. One, once you're activated your hooks, uh, ask Keith, uh, he'll tell you. He's the one that got me hooked on Pota, so and he told me this is he's really he's well you know how famous he is he's great at this so he's he's a, he's a great master instructor to Al Elmer to help the Pota. Thank you so much. Seven threes and have a happy Thanksgiving. Oh, absolutely. Keith is one of the good ones down there. Thanks for being out there and good luck and happy Thanksgiving. Seven three. Thanks. Uh, happy Thanksgiving to you too. Appreciate the contact as always, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. You too, Keith. 73. Have fun. All right, 73. See what I said? CQ Pada, CQ Parsonier, CQ, CQ, Whiskey Alpha 6, Quebec, X, Rapid Coast, CQ. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Okay, the Kilo India 6, one more time. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. November Alpha Zulu. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Uh, that's a familiar call. This is WA6 USA. Wait, this is Josh? <laughs> Keith here, US 7377. Yeah, it's Josh. You're making it down here, 5-9 in Cerritos, California. Okay, well, I got uh, Keith over here. He's the first time doing an activation, so give him a chance. All right, let's go. Yeah, Kilo Alpha 6, Charlie Mike Golf. Uh, Kilo Echo 6, November Alpha Zulu. I've watched you so many times. You have, you have changed <laughs> a lot of things I do. I, I, I watch you every day. KA6CMG, my first photo activation. Yeah, I heard you. I heard you out there with your first activation, man. Congratulations, or you're working at it. You'll get there. This is uh, you're, you're making it 5-9 into Cerritos, California. I'm glad I could have be uh, some service out there, so I hope you're having fun. Well, thank you, Josh. You're, yeah, first activation, and you're an inspiration. Thank you so much for everything. 7-3, happy Thanksgiving. Hey, 7-3, and happy Thanksgiving to you. Have fun out there. Hey, Josh, always a pleasure. Good talking to you again. Have a great Thanksgiving, okay? <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate it. 7-3. Seven, 7-3. Three. Seven, three. Do you watch that? So all things considered, I like this new Chameleon Blank. I think the 17-foot whip is a, is a great little piece of kit you can add to your arsenal. A lot of people go out in the field with wire antennas, and that's wonderful. They work really well. Remember, I like, I like resonant antennas. The same goes for a vertical, and if it's resonant, uh, you can do a lot with it, and it's a good option in case you want to try something a little bit different. I use some accessories like this donut for the radials. You don't need that. You can just use a ring terminal connector with a bundle of wire wires try four wires about 12 feet long and we did use this vertical rod to give a little bit more length to that 17 foot whip I hear chameleon is working on a slightly longer whip that would get rid of the need to have this so that you can again refine your kit and bring it down a little bit I'll have links in the video description so you can check this out it's available now it just came out I think it's pretty much brand new and uh, yeah, can't, can't beat it for doing parks on the air, particularly even QRP. I saw you heard me get out pretty well, and I think you'd be able to activate no problem with it. I'm Josh KI6NAZ. Thanks for watching. 73.